exciting information about Chicago involving African Americans and the African influence here in Chicago. Chicago is full of rich, rich, rich history involving African Americans that you would like to know. It's amazing that Chicago has such rich history with so many inventors, artists, politicians. And today on WAIH, we're going to just give you a sneak peek of some of our inventors and some of our other artists who hail from across the Midwest on WAIH. Thank you so much for coming out this afternoon. We're going to be talking about Chicagoans and their history. I specifically will be focusing on Chicago African American artists. So just gear up, get your ears ready, and Deborah's going to take it away. Well, I'd like to start off with how Chicago was founded years and years ago. It was a gentleman who hailed from Haiti. Jean-Baptiste Point du Sable. For those of you who speak French, let me know if I said it correctly. <laughs> Here in Chicago, we say Jean-Baptiste du Sable. We have a museum that is named after him here in Chicago. That's the DuSable Museum. The DuSable Museum, the second largest museum of its nature in the country, rapidly becoming the largest once they open their new wing, which is soon to come. Absolutely. Interesting thing about DuSable, you can find uh, his bust over on the bridge when you go down the one mag mile. You will find his bust right there on the bridge. And you can also go and visit the museum over in Hyde Park, just off of Washington Park. Well, Deborah, did you know that there were so many African-American inventors who we use their products every day, we eat their foods every day that they invented, but we may not necessarily know their names. And I'm gonna just share with you a gentleman by the name of George Crumb. Has anyone ever heard of the name George Crumb? How many of you eat potato chips every day? There you go. George Crumb was the inventor of potato chips. Yeah, that's right. He was the son of an African-American father and a native mother, and Crumb was working as the chief in the summer of 1853 when he accidentally invented the potato chip. Well, it all began when he was a patron who ordered a plate of French fried potatoes, and they sent him back to Crumb's kitchen because he felt they were too thick and too soft. This was the beginning of the whole era of what we now know as the potato chip. And shortly thereafter, to teach the picky customer a lesson, Mr. Crumb Deborah sliced a new batch of potatoes as thinly as he could. And after that, he fried them so that they were hard and crunchy. And that was the beginning of the potato chip era in 1853. Okay, and, and Jermaine, I wanted to share this fun food fact with you as well. We talk about soul food, don't we? Soul yes. food. And we have our soul music, don't we? Soul yes, we music. do. We have a lot of soul in the house today. Well, the soul influence came out of the 60s civil rights movement Absolutely. and the black consciousness um, movement as well. And it was a Mary Baraka who made the determination when they wanted to say there's no such thing as black culture. He said, yes, there is. We have our own food, which is a right. marker right. for distinguishing culture. And one of those food types is fried chicken. But well, watch this. Guess where fried chicken came from? Tell us. Where? It came from Scotland. The Scottish were the first ones to bring it here wow. through the uh, little fritters. And it was the African slaves brought into the house as cooks who were cooking with chicken in the southern style that we got the fried chicken that we know today. Does anyone out there like fried chicken? Make some noise if you like fried chicken. <laughs> is when we celebrate Fried Chicken Day in America. <laughs> wow. Well, let's hear from Kay to talk about some of our artists here in Chicago and abroad. Well, you know Chicago is famous for its blues, jazz, and gospel, right? Wow. So I want to tell you about a couple of people who are, who are blues artists here in Chicago. And the first person I want to talk about is Muddy Waters. Who's familiar with Muddy Waters out there? Muddy Waters. Yeah. Uh, the blues. <laughs> Well, did you know Muddy Waters' name was uh, McKinley Morganfield? He was born April 4th, 1913, and he passed away April 30th, 1983. But he was better known, as we all know, as Muddy Waters, an African-American blues musician, and Muddy Waters is considered the father of the modern Chicago blues. 
And so another person, and I just wanted to let you guys, for those of you who don't know what muddy borders look like, this is a picture of him, and we can pass these around too. Um, there was Coco Taylor. Coco Taylor. Coco Taylor. Yes. Coco Taylor out of Chicago. Well, Coco Taylor uh, was popularly known here in Chicago as the queen of the blues. And she was known primarily for her rough, powerful vocals and her traditional blues stylings. So these are a couple of the most famous blues persons that we know in Chicago. Does anybody out there, can anybody out there tell me who's their favorite, favorite blues artist? that you guys know? Yes, Valerie, Valerie Washington was yeah. my favorite. Right here in Chicago. That's right. Okay. Young lady, unfortunately yeah. she died in early death. Yes. Wow. Okay. Yes. Yeah. All right, so I wanted to share with you another great woman here in Chicago. And there's a whole housing community that was developed in her name, Ida B. Wells. She was known as a great civil rights activist. She was born a slave, and her parents died of yellow fever, but she fought against uh, racism uh, to get an education to find her way here to Chicago. It was in her travels that she witnessed the lynching of uh, some young black men that got her to writing. She said, I'm gonna write about this. So she became a prolific writer and a journalist. And we might think of Rosa Parks for launching the civil rights movement, for sitting on the bus. Well, it was Ida B. Wells who refused to give up her seat on a train years before. Wow. Absolutely. And she took the, she took the uh, train company to court and she won the case for a settlement of $500 when she refused to move and it threw off the train anyway. But then down in Tennessee, the higher court struck it down so she never did get her money. But that's a testament to the kind of a woman that she was, the fighter and the civil rights activist that we love and appreciate today. Ida B. Wells. Give it up you know Ida B. Wells. Can I just give you a little sidebar on Ida B. Wells? Chicago had a World's Fair in 1893, oh. and Ida B. Wells, Frederick Douglass, and a couple of others wrote a book about it because African Americans were not allowed to participate in the fair. Right. And she wrote a book called The Reason Why the Colored American is, is Not Included in the World's Columbian Exhibition. So a lot of people don't know about that fair, but I would you know, encourage you to take a look at the 1893 World's Fair, which was like the biggest fair ever in the world. Absolutely. And Ida B. Wells and Frederick Douglass did participate in the fair, so I, I thought I would yes, thank give you that. Well, that's an amazing fact, and I know you two ladies were like me, trying to rush and get here today, and there was so much traffic trying to get through the streets of Chicago, Absolutely. and I think I kind of broke a few laws by running a few of the stoplights. And as I was going through the stoplights, I was reminded, how many of you knew that there was an African-American gentleman who invented the stoplight? His name, was his name was Garrett Morgan. Give it up for Garrett Morgan. Garrett Morgan was an African-American gentleman who invented the very first stoplight that had three signals on it. It had red, yellow, and green. And because of Garrett Morgan's invention back in the 1800s, we are just blessed to be able to travel throughout the various streets without having collision and car accidents. But not only did Garrett Morgan invent the stoplight, he also invented the gas mask. Wow. And we know that the gas mask was used in several of our wars. But Garrett Morgan was born in the last quarter of the 19th century to former slaves. He was the only formally educated to the sixth grade level. He was only formally educated to the sixth grade. It's amazing that he was able to just create so many things with such a um, short education. But like many inventors, Morgan had an innate mechanical mind that enabled him to solve problems. He was a problem solver. And unlike most inventors, he was also a skilled entrepreneur. After moving to Cleveland, Ohio at the age of 18, Garrett Morgan's business became, his business became um, so popular that it catapulted him to immediate success. And again, not only did he invent the stoplight and the traffic signal and the gas mask, he invented so many other things that you can go online and see all of his inventions. But Garrett Morgan is just an African-American inventor that we are just living with all of his products on today. Awesome. That's very awesome. 
Uh, you know we're having all of these award ceremonies across the country now tonight is the Oscars. How many people are going to tune in? Mm. Okay, well, we just had the Grammys. I'm going to just go right over there. We had just had the Grammys uh, last week, and so I wanted to give you a little tidbit about the Grammy Awards. Um, the first rap artists for the Grammys were DJ Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince, Will Smith. Did you know that their record, Parents Just Don't Understand, you guys remember that song? Well, they won the first Grammy, rap wow. Grammy, for that song. So that's a um, black history fact that I'm sure a lot of people did not know about. But I love Will Smith. I, I, I can sing the theme song to the Fresh Prince. Oh, I'm sorry, oh, we're not here for that. <laughs> they did it on yeah. Jimmy Kimmel. Was one of they those sure did, was yeah. Hilarious. Well, guys, you know that on Tuesday is election day. Is everyone registered and ready to vote? Yes. Yeah. Let's Are you going to get out there and vote? It is your civic responsibility to get out and vote. Well, here in Chicago, there is one man who single-handedly corralled and redefined the direction of politics among African Americans. And he actually was able to do that by engaging people in the political process. As a result of that effort, he became the first African American mayor of our great Windy City on the Lake, none other than Harold Washington. Harold Washington. So he goes down in history not only for being a great mayor, but for offering an example of what can be done when people take agency and understand the power of their vote. He was truly a public servant. He said, I will not run until you make me run. And Chicago made Harold Well, Deborah, I have another Washington. How many of you guys have heard of the name George Washington Carver? Anyone heard of that name? Does anyone know what George Washington Carver invented? Peanuts. Peanuts, yes. George Washington Carver was born January 5th, 1864. He was an American inventor. The exact day and year of his birth are unknown, but he was born into slavery in Missouri in either, the records say either 1861 or 1864. But Carver's reputation is based on his research into the promotion of alternative crops such as cotton, peanuts, soybeans, and sweet potatoes, which also aided to nutrition for farm families. He wanted poor farmers to grow alternative crops both as a source of their own food and as a source of other products to improve their quality of life. The most popular of Mr. Carver's inventions out of all 44 of them were for the farmers who contained 105 food recipes containing peanuts. George Washington Carver, he also developed and promoted about 100 products made from peanuts that were useful for the house and for the farm, including many of the cosmetics that you ladies are wearing today, dyes, paints, plastics, gasoline, and even nitroglycerin. George Washington Carver also received numerous honors for his work, including the Spingarn Medal of the NAACP. Give it up for George Washington Carver. Yeah. 